But dear students, before going to any type of modulation techniques like analog modulation or a digital modulation, we should know first what exactly is modulation. And to know modulation, first we should know what is the signal. Now, whatever we speak, whatever the message, whatever the information, whatever data, whatever is in any other form of energy, first should be converted to electrical energy. Say for example, I am speaking here, whatever I am speaking is a message or a information, that should be converted to electrical energy. And once you convert that information or message or data to electrical energy, it becomes a low frequency signal. It becomes a low frequency signal and low frequency signal cannot travel or cannot be a communicated for a far distance communication. For example, if I'm speaking to you here in the classroom, whatever I'm speaking, you can hear me. But if you are one or kilometer away from me, at that time, if I speak from here, you will not be able to hear me. Why? Because whatever I'm speaking, that low frequency signal will get attenuated in the atmosphere. It will get attenuated in the atmosphere, it will get lost in the atmosphere, it will find more a resistance and it cannot travel for a longer distance. That is why we require modulation. Now in modulation what will happen? There will be one more high frequency sine wave which will carry this low frequency information or data from one point to another in a long distance communication. Say for example, this is your information signal which is a low frequency it is information or message or data anything you can call it this is your low frequency information signal and carrier will be a high frequency sine wave this will be a, a carrier so this is your information this is information and this is carrier carrier the job of the a carrier is to carry the information from one point to another in a long distance communication because a high frequency wave can pierce into the atmosphere. It can go for a long distance. It will not find any attenuation. So it can go from one point to another. But the problem here is you cannot make your information wave, which is originally low frequency, you cannot make it as a high frequency. Then we have to take support of a high frequency carrier separately. Means what? Now this high frequency carrier will have some parameters like amplitude. It will have amplitude. It will have frequency. And it can have phase. So one of these parameters, whether it is amplitude or frequency or phase, can be varied according to the according to the instantaneous value of the information or the modulating voltage how this is varying no? your information is varying like that only if you vary vary either the amplitude or the frequency or the phase of the carrier say for example if you vary the amplitude of the carrier according to the instantaneous value of the information signal then you will come out with something called as amplitude modulation similarly if you vary only frequency and if you keep amplitude and phase constant if you vary frequency according to the instantaneous value of the modulating signal then you will get frequency modulation similarly if you vary only phase of the carrier according to the instantaneous value of the information or the um, modulating signal then you will get phase modulation so these are the three types of modulations which we study in analog modulation once we come to a digital modulation technique then what will happen is whatever information you are having which is in analog form should be in digital form it should be in binary numbers where binary numbers are represented by some line coding of electrical waveform. If you do that, if the information is in a digital format and that a digital information, if it is going to vary the parameter of a carrier, then you come to something called as digital modulation techniques.